Hello? Is this on? Hello? Hello? I'm here. Yes. We are here. That's great. So since last time we had a POC meeting. Um, sorry, was that a question? Like, yes, we had the TOC meeting, right? I mean. Yeah, that's uh, okay. correct. It's not a question. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so can you share your screen with the uh, meeting notes if anybody has added anything? Can you send the link for the meeting notes uh, or, or you send it on Slack? Sorry. I believe they should be. If not, we can change the Slack message to include. No, it's not. It's not there. Okay. Well, it's in the community. <laughs> Yeah, we should we should probably change that so that yes yeah. okay um yeah so can i see it yes excellent i believe anyone can access it okay so today is july 19. yep so I, I, yeah, I, I had a meeting and so I'm just out of that meeting now, so. Great, so uh, action points from the TLC meeting were to try to get access to the YouTube channel for Jenkins X. Yes, I think we have access. I, I, I would actually ask James if we can get admin access instead of manager because I can't add anyone or remove anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, that's like in the future, if we have to add more maintainers, it becomes a bottleneck if we don't have the, like we don't have the right access. So. Absolutely. You want to ask him in the Slack thing? like. Yeah. Okay. And um, we should migrate to hack MD for the notes. Yes, I actually didn't get much time to look into it, but I I will I will do that. I, I haven't like just changing uh switching to new job, just trying yeah. to find the schedule working. Seems like I don't have any conflicts in meetings, so that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Uh because that, it, it, I mean, if, if I had the daily, so our daily uh, stand-up starts at 10, ends at 10.30, and like uh, Eastern, you know, like standard time, and uh, Jenkins X office hours is at, uh, you know, like 11. So, hmm. so, so that is good. <laughs> nice. Uh, want to put the agenda. Uh, have right. E. What's the other one? Ah, Jenk, uh, YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. I will pass to uh, James again. Yeah. Uh, another thing I want to talk about was the AWS uh, open source credits. Mm -hmm. I have not heard back anything. No news yet. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to send them an email today. Yeah, they will probably read that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I told, you know, like Fatih that we haven't like 
uh, heard back from Amazon. And he said, so I also told him that I'm going to send an email. He said that I, sh I, I should keep him in the loop. So, so once I have heard back something from Amazon, uh, then I will let them know because they told us that they will be back in seven to 10 business days and we applied on June 22nd and we haven't really heard anything back. So um, I, I, I would like to, like, I, I will try to be a bit more, you know, like aggressive about it and see what we can do about it. Yeah, give I mean, them aggressive, give like them. just sending emails. Yeah, give them help. <laughs> Yeah, just going to send an email <laughs> asking what's <Right>. happening. <laughs> um, the what other things like I have other things to talk about. So ES, so migration. Uh, so I started looking at the docs of you know like ESO. Uh, Yes, so migration from KES. There is a GitHub issue for that, and um, yeah, perhaps you should uh, spell out what this means to those who are not. Uh, yeah, so know all the abbreviations. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Kubernetes. Uh, hold on. Let me let me just link that issue so we can we can talk about it also. So basically, uh, the way. Uh, Jenkins X works with, you know, like secrets is we have, so we use something called, uh, you know, like AES, which is Kubernetes, you know, like external uh, and then you know, like secrets. Yep. And what that does is it basically um, looks at Vault or ASM or GSM or, you know, like AKV, um, which are different um, secret stores. So, you know, like ASM is Amazon, you know, like secret manager, then GSM is Google, you know, like secret manager, uh, AKV is, you know, like Azure Key Vault and Vault is just Vault. Um, I mean, Vault is, you know, like the HashiCorp Vault. So what it does is it syncs the secrets from those stores into Kubernetes, you know, like secrets. Um, the thing is, um, KES was in, was written in JavaScript and they are um, moving to a go, you know, like rewrite of it, which is called, you know, like ESO, external secrets and, you know, like operator. Mm. So all the work has stopped in, you know, like KES. So all of the work is being done in, you know, like ESO. Um, it, it has reached feature parity. It did not like long time back, like about I think three, four months back, they had still some things that 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 uh, did not, like they didn't have, uh, you know, like that didn't work with, you know, like ESO, but it seems like it does. Um, so I started looking at like how much of work it's going to be. Um, and so if you, you know, like click on that issue that I uh, linked, um, basically it changes the CRDs quite a bit. Like initially you just had one, you know, like CRD called external, you know, like secrets that used to do all the stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so if you just click on the link, because I think that has also all, all of the info. So it had one, you know, like CRD, which, you know, like specified which, a uh, secret to sync, uh, which, you know, like backend to use and what uh, access to be used. Um, so now they have, you know, like broken it down into multiple, you know, like CRDs. Like they have a CRD that talks only about what to sync and then a CRD that talks about um you know like how to fetch that you know like data and then they have a cluster you know like secret store versus a uh, versus a name spaced you know like secret store right. so so i think like uh looking at the code base in jake's you know like secret um that would require some changes so that we can start uh 
like so that we can do you know like the migration what i had in mind was it would be good to list the crds so that uh jx you know like secret can work with uh both um work with both the like both you know like kes and you know like eso so that you know it doesn't have to be a drastic uh you know like a migration for people like we don't want to break um uh, you know like jake's you know like secret mm. so um I, I, i'm i'm actually you know like taking a look at it so at my company actually we use you know like kes of course not using you know like jenkins x we use argo uh, mm. uh but uh but we do use you know like kes and they have one cluster with you know like eso at this point so they i I'm also, you know, like looking at that project. So, you know, I'm going kind of going to bundle both of these things together. Mm -hmm. uh, that just helps out a bit. But yes, that's 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 basically the gist of the work. Trying to do it in a way that uh, is going to be a seamless, you know, like migration, rather than, you know, like a, you know, like a drastic thing and then things break and. Uh, it just doesn't doesn't work. So uh, that's 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 the idea. Like the JX, you know, like secret code should work with both KES and ESO because you can query the Kubernetes, you know, like API for the different, you know, like CRDs. That's my guess. Again, maybe once I start the work, I may see that is it's not possible, and then we have to think of like writing. I mean, of course, we will write a blog post on this, but then we have to be more careful if it is a breaking change, right? We have to be very, very careful about that. Right? Mm, sure. Yeah, and we will not be the only ones who need yes. to migrate. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the work that I was looking at. Uh, uh, I, I, I see there's a remove or close old issues that you want to talk about, I guess. Yeah, uh, I, I don't I, know who added it. Uh, yeah. it, it was me. It's oh, me. okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah so I I was creating an issue on JX uh, repo, and I saw there are some issues uh, from 2018. Mm. Uh, yeah. So I think like uh, remove like either we should close them or remove them because like one of them was actually code first issue, but uh, like now it doesn't make sense. Mm. Uh, so I, yeah, yeah. I I think yeah. You can you can close them, but at least give a comment like that. It's not relevant in v in v three. Uh, do can you can you can you list all of those you know like issues so we can take a look. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll create an another issue on the same repo about the old issues if you want. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like uh. Just working on the bird scrub. Okay. Yeah, that's very good to clean up. This yeah. Bit. Yeah, we have we have quite a few issues, and uh, yeah, I think somebody also opened an issue today around you know like oh uh, around you know uh, and uh, storing Helm charts in you know like GCR if I believe which. All right. Would be really nice. Uh, OCI support is something that that I think we we don't have it working that well, but I I think it it can be fixed. Um, I I also think somebody else wanted to work on the uh, EKS work that I was trying to work on, but I never really got the time. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next one was. Um, Last year, I added support for nested uh, GitLab, you know, like repository. So what that means is in, you know, like GitHub, you have the org and then you have the repo, right? So you have Jenkins-X as the org and then JX as the repo or JX-UI as the repo or say mm. Jenkins-X uh, plugins as the org and uh, JX-Pipeline as the repo. Uh, whereas in GitLab, that is an option to have uh, nested groups. So 
you would have say JX as the top level org, and then you can have a subgroup called JX core that has say JX and JX, you know, like helpers, JX3 version. And then you can have another, you know, like subgroup uh, under the main, you know, like JX group that uh, say that has JX pipeline, JX, uh, you know, like GitOps and like all those kind of stuff. So uh, that was not working in V3 at all. I, I remember uh, early this year or late last year, I, I I did a bunch of work to actually fix that. Like, so uh, before we couldn't even, you know, like import, you know, like a repository. So now if you go to the documentation, you will see that if you do minus minus, you know, like nested, uh, it it actually like Jenkins X, you know, like understands that it's in a nested, you know, like repository and it will set the org and the repo you know, like right way. Um, that was done, but um, a group that actually uses Jenkins X, they are doing a migration from V2 to V3 uh, and they use, uh, you know, like GitLab and they actually use nested uh, repo and they so I was working with them last year to to like at least get it to a stage where they could um, run pipelines like at least the CI part was working um, the part that was not working was the CD part so like the, the change log you know like generation uh, that was not working so that was fixed yesterday uh, I, I, I made a, no, sorry, not yesterday, uh, last week. Oh, yeah, I think, yes. Uh, last week I fixed the issue with JX change log that, uh, that can now, uh, take into account the nested, you know, like repositories. Uh, and so what happens is the, like the charts, you know, like folder has charts slash, you know, like subgroup slash, you know, like repo, whereas in GitHub, it is charts slash repo. So I added the fix there so that um, it it knows that it's you know like nested and it can do the change log and like generation and all those stuff um, and it can now do uh, Helm you know like release so so it can actually uh, upload the package and so all like all that works uh, what they reported and it's an issue in JX uh, repo. We are we are having issues. So they so they are having issues with JX Slack. Uh, I looked at the code base. I the issue is in JX uh, you know, like GitOps. Um, I, I just asked them for some extra information that they will post in the issue so that everybody knows exactly what I'm asking for and what I'm working on. Um, that is one issue that I believe I will be working on this week because you know I'm very close to completing it, and probably good. It's probably a good idea to complete what I started. Um, and the other issue was Jake's uh, pipeline. Uh, Jake's pipeline start does not work in general with. Um, with you know uh, nested repos so uh, that's also something that i'm taking a look at and i am uh, adding the links in the in the notes so people know that it's actually being tracked um, so yeah that i i i actually think in general and i i, I could be wrong, but I, I had seen people talk about Jake's pipeline start and stop not working with GitLab in general. So uh, I have my test GitLab account that I, I use with K3S and I, I, I can I can play uh, around a bit with it and, and just see see what is happening. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that that works. Um, yeah, that's what I was trying to work on uh, last week, and yeah, that's actually all I was doing. Nothing, nothing more. Yeah, but you did something else, didn't you? Do something with Tekton zero thirty. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Sorry, thanks for reminding. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yes, yeah, so 0 0.32.4. So we just, I mean, so we release the chart for Tecton 0 0.32.4. Uh, we are also changing the, changing the, uh, so the chart version used to mirror the app version. So the app was Tecton and mm. the chart, so if you have Tecton 0 0.29.2, then the chart version was also 0 0.29.2, which kind of makes no sense because if tomorrow I were to fix something in the chart, but not change the Tecton pipeline version, then I don't know what to do. So uh, from this release, we are doing 0 0.1.0. We're starting with 0 0.1.0 as the, as the chart version and uh, the like the app version is now set to Tecton uh, Helm chart, which is 0 0.32.4. Um, it's so I made a change, I think last month, where we are not auto bumping Tecton Helm charts because I think like Tecton is an integral part of Jenkins X, and if Tecton fails, then basically Jenkins X, you know, <laughs> you know, like all of that glue code we have in Lighthouse will will just break if we are not a bit careful with it. So I've asked yeah. a bunch of people to test. I'm also doing some tests on my own. Um, uh, I, so I am planning to do two tests. One is a new cluster. So that would be my local, you know, like A3S. So I will just change. Uh, so I, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to start with 0 0.1.0 version of like the Tecton charts, which is Tecton 0 0.32.4. Um, that would be one test. The second test is start with, you know, like whatever is in the version stream and then do, you know, like an upgrade. Uh, I also have a personal EKS cluster that I use for some of the EKS work. Um, and I'm probably going to just upgrade the Tecton chart version and just see what happens. Like if things work, if they don't work, that uh, that is that is going to work. I know, uh, what is his name? Uh, Nicholas, and I could be wrong. I sorry about that. Helm. Uh, so let's see, Tecton Helm. Uh, chart i mean uh, also on that topic I, I don't know why this chart is in the cd foundation repo like i it's not like anybody from tecton is maintaining it is checking mm. sex so maybe we should we should we should move it to the jenkins x org uh because at this point we don't like we don't have like i mean of course we don't have admin access to cd foundation like why should we and uh, we do have admin access to this particular, you know, like repository. But this chart, I believe, is mostly used by Jenkins. I, I, I could be wrong, and I will ask around. But uh, yeah, it has some issues with uh, namespace and hard. This, the, I, I think, these issues make it a little bit hard to be used as a general. Yeah, okay. just like, yeah. I mean, it, it will still be teched on hyphen pipelines. It's just that we just we just move it from City Foundation to Jenkins X or go. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, the, uh, it limits the usage of this structure, I think. I mean, we are also open source. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not like we will we will uh, close source it. Um, mm -hmm. But but yeah, I mean, it's 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 not going to happen like tomorrow. <laughs> and the reason I brought it up is it is sort of related to the supply chain project. So uh, Osama, I think not this week, but hopefully next month, we'll start looking at Tecton chains. And so we would want to create a Helm chart for Tecton chains. I found one actually, um, Tecton chains. I, I think it's, 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 it's from, um, is it from from Tecton itself? No, no, no. It's it's not from Tecton. It's I think it's from uh, what is so from 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 I think you know like Cosine, like the company that 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 does Cosine. I just remember. I, I remember Cosine so is for Tecton. So it's from well, it's from you know like Chain Guard Dev. Uh, I will I will post it here. 
tecton chains helm chart uh, i just posted in that's in the I, I just i just added it in the meeting notes yep. so um so if you click on that it should actually take you to the uh, the uh, tecton and the thing is they actually have charts for pipelines as well so we should probably collaborate with them and have a single chart rather than having multiple charts and it's kind of like you know we should be like working with other open source communities as well and as part of uh, osama's project right we are going to be uh, working on a lot of uh, supply chain uh, projects and I think one of them is Cosign. So I, I hope Chain Guard is actually the company behind Cosign, but whatever. <laughs> um, I think I think so. But anyways, um, so yeah, we we should probably look at. We should we should probably have a have a chart like have a, a chart, but a chat with them about the okay. charts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and see i mean you know like if, if if we can combine them like rather than two communities trying to maintain the same thing it just makes no sense to to me at least um, might so. be a good place for me to jump in here um i i just wanted to let everyone know that in the cdf toc meeting which follows this one uh, we're actually planning to talk about some work to try and provide a reference architecture for continuous delivery, uh, working towards a set of reference implementations with different technologies. Um, so that actually covers some of these problems about you know, not having you know, good standards for you know, which charts people should be sharing and who's maintaining them and uh, you know, making stuff like that reusable. Yes. Uh, so if, if people are interested, then feel free to come along to that next meeting. Yes, yes. I I think me and uh, Christopher should be there today. Yeah, I'm afraid I can't uh, today. I have other... Okay, I, other I will be there. Um, Great. Uh, okay. I, uh, I would agree with you. Thank you. Uh, the other thing, actually, we should have done it in the beginning, but I see there are new people. Uh, can you introduce? Like, we should have done it in the in the in the beginning. I just did not see. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I joined late also. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself? I think I see two new. Uh -huh. Hi everyone, I am Arvind. I am 20 years old and I am currently studying computer science in India. Uh, I am currently in second year. A little bit about my tech journey. I started coding in the, in May 2020 in the COVID year and I did front end for a year. I contributed to an open source project. Then I uh, attended a machine learning bootcamp and I graduated from it in Fab. And now I am learning DevOps and backend. I am also part of the Altelius open source project. Ah, oh. okay, it's great. Sorry, what open source project? Uh, Altelius. Altelius. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. Nice to see you. Very nice. Hmm. I think we have another person. Or did he leave? Uh, I think I'm the one, the latest one. Yes. Uh, am I audible right now? Yes. Am I yes. audible yeah. right now? Yes. No. That's okay. uh, uh, yes. 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 That's me. Uh, mm -hmm. um, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Ozu. So, um, Currently, I'm a DevOps practitioner, so mostly kind of involving into the operation side. Even the title is DevOps, but and and I was, you know, like exploring a lot of uh, 
open source communities and try to figuring out and, and I saw really a good good uh, community uh, so that I I really wanted to be grow here and I really wanted to learn and expand my horizon so mm -hmm. I came off here and 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 the first thing is the community members are really welcoming. I recently know Raza and, and he gave me the link to, to join this session. So, and he, and he did assist me right here. So thank you, Raza. And yeah, so, yeah, and, and, and apart from that, currently I'm a second year uh, computer science student from Nepal. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. And, and, and this is my first uh, community bonding ever I have ever done. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. I'm really excited to be part of here. Um, yeah. That's great. great. So have you tried uh, to install uh, JQTX uh, using K3 or something on your laptop or some, somewhere else? Sorry, I, I, I didn't get the point. I was just curious if you have been able to install Jenkins X um, on your own. Uh, okay. Uh, actually, uh, at my work, I do a lot of uh, Kubernetes stop work. So where I mostly work with EKS. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure it out. Recently, I, I I have explored the Jenkins documentation. So I'm trying to figure it out and and you know like through the Helm chart, I'm trying to install and 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 give maybe giving the feedback or something else. But I recently, I I, I haven't installed on my own uh, EKS clusters. Yeah, uh, uh, like, you know, like, oh, of course, if you if you want to install Jenkins X in an EKS cluster, that's great, but you know, that will that will cost you money. Uh, it's probably yeah. <laughs> a good idea to start with, you know, like A3S because we have, I believe good, you know, like documentation on that. Uh, and you run everything, you know, like locally, you know, like except uh, GitHub. Maybe one day we will support, you know, like Gitia, and that will probably make it a bit better. Um, but but yes, uh, if you are, yeah. So another thing was we. I I, I don't know if you are, you know, like interested in the UI uh, project that you know, like Roger is, you know, like working on. Uh, if you are, then we actually meet every Friday at eight o'clock. Well, uh, actually, you can take a look at the Jenkins X calendar. It's just eight my time. I could probably look at what time is it in, you know, like UTC. Uh, but it's in the Jenkins X calendar. And I will uh, post in the in the Slack channel if you are, you know, like interested. So. We are building a new UI for Jenkins X. The back end is in Go. The front end is in Svelte. Um, we, we like it, you know if you if you want to join that and you know like contribute to it, you know try it out a bit. That would be also you know very much like very great, like very nice for us. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, let me explore a little yeah. bit wider and then I can. Uh, Yes, I can and, part of you. yes, great. And also, we will be starting the Jenkins X upgrade from Go 1.17 to Go 1.18. There is a issue in the Jenkins X uh, repo. So if you are interested in working on that, just pick a repository, make your changes, open a PR. Uh, that's like a good way to at least understand the PR, you know, like workflow. Um, and I have linked in that issue a document that talks about what changes you need to make. Uh, uh, one of the issues we do have with Jenkins X is not all the repos have a standard, uh, I mean, like a standard make file or like those kind of stuff. We have tried to, you know, like standardize it as much as we can. But if you see something that is like that doesn't make sense, like it, like one of the things is we are supposed to have a go underscore version in the make file. But I checked and we don't have that in some of the you know, like repositories. And so if you if you come across them, just comment in that issue. Uh, I mean, of 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 course, if you are you know like interested in the in the you know like upgrade work, um, because Go one dot one nine is coming soon, 
And once 1.19 is released, 1.17 is not going to be supported anymore. Uh, in the future, I would really like us to, to do the Kubernetes model where you go with 1.19. It's just that I think we need to improve our you know, like testing before we can do it like Kubernetes. But at least being in the supported range, I think we, that's that's like that's a good start. Um, I I I I did the upgrade uh, alone, like single handedly, which was not a good idea at all. Uh, but I did it from 1.15 to 1.17, and a lot of the knowledge was just lost. Like when other people, like first of all, I forgot to upgrade some of the packages. Um, and when other people did it, they ran into issues, which, which I had, you know, like encountered, but I did not document anywhere. So that's the idea of that, you know, like issue that is in the Jenkins X repo. Um, so that like all of that, like all of that, uh, you know, like information and, uh, knowledge is shared with the community. And then we can use that as a template to do the next Golang, you know, like upgrade that's going to happen. I think in like six months time, right? The 1.19. So if you are, yeah. you know, like interested, just sounds, sounds, yeah, sounds really good for me. Yeah. I recently have been some out there too. So. It yeah. might be really good, good to start. Yeah, thank you. Then, uh, yeah, please. I mean, we're always uh, happy to have new, you know, like contributors. Uh, so, you know, because we are looking for more contributors and eventual maintainers of Jenkins X. Uh, at this point, we have four. Uh, hopefully, by the end of this year or early next year, we can hit five or six, depending on how things go uh but i think we need even more <laughs> to keep jenkins x running uh you know like smoothly mm -hmm. okay i think the last thing at least from my end that i wanted to talk about was uh release process um mm -hmm. i i think i tagged you in that issue i also tagged uh osama and rajat and I think I tagged all the maintainers, but uh, we used to have something called the LTS version. Yes. And um, that is not a thing anymore. The last one was done in September. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we, we are in the process of like, you know, getting things going and forming a community and doing all that stuff that so that thing has completely been, you know, like neglected. Uh, also, we, we have kind of added a bit more testing. Uh, I think very soon we will have also vault tests running in the end-to-end -end, apart from just, you know, like GSM. So that is good. So it will catch more bugs. Um, uh, but I still think that, uh, that the Jenkins X model, like the release model is, is not very, you know, like suitable for widespread you know like adoption like if I, like if you look at cert manager for example right they don't release like five versions a day uh, we can do pre-release and everything but you don't you don't see like five versions they have a very well documented uh, release process uh, they start with the release candidate, then they move to alpha, to, to like beta, then maybe beta one, two, and eventually you 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 get a GA version. Um, I, I was thinking to write uh, enhancement, you know, like proposal and just share it with the community. And mm. it, like, it would be nice if you and, you know, like Terry, because he's, he's like, like, you know, like he heads the best practices say if, you know, both of you can take a look at like, like, so once I have the document, I will post and tag, you know, like both of you. Uh, but I, I, I was, I was thinking like something that is more, you know, like tested um, and something that is more, uh, you know, like stable um, would, would, would make a lot of sense rather than just putting like, deploying the latest master uh like because our testing and just the scope of jenkins x makes it very hard to actually get a stable yeah. piece of software so i i i i'm 
I'm still exploring ideas. Mm. I wanted to do the Kubernetes model. Like, I mean, there are also these, in, well, I think, you know, like the Kubernetes model is a bit more complex and I don't think we have the manpower yet to, to, to kind of do that. But yeah. like, uh, like, some of, like some of the questions I had was, so we have say an LTS version. How how many LTS versions do we uh, support? Like, mm. um, so say there is a there is a bug, right? You you want to patch one point seven and one point eight branch, or do you want to patch one point eight only? Uh, I I think we need to be very thorough about about these things, and that will also help. You know, like one of the things I'm seeing even in like my current company is people don't upgrade that, like that often. Uh, mm. And like, we don't really have great uh, upgrade paths. And I think it's very hard to have an upgrade path if every uh, merge into the master branch or the trunk is tagged as a release because <laughs> it's just, just like makes it hard. So whereas if we have say 1.8 or 1.7 we can actually document the you know like upgrade paths like what mm. is like what do you need to do to go from 1.7 to 1.8 which i think gives a bit more confidence to newer and like like newer uh, users of jenkins x uh, i mean this i mean this is nothing new if it's just there like if you see argo you see even helm Right, like you don't, you don't, like you don't really just use anything in Helm. Like there is always an option for people to use the master. Like that should always be there. But I, I, I think like we need to think about something along the lines of you know like LTS, and then having people like locked down to versions so that they, they, you know, like, like, you know saying that we will support at least two versions or one version of LTS so that, you know, people know what is the release, you know, like cadence and also they know how to upgrade. Uh, not having that knowledge, I think, makes some bigger companies a bit, you know, like anxious when they have to uh, adopt Jenkins X. Like, I mean, many times you have seen this, right? Like everything is working, then you do a GitOps, you know, like upgrade and everything breaks. And not, not everything, but things break. And um, I, I think that just is not like that is not you know like an acceptable thing. If I mean if I were to like if 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 I were a release engineer at say some some company and I pick Jenkins X and uh, I do JX GitOps upgrade and it breaks because I don't know what is going to break because we don't really talk sure. about you know like upgrade guides. So I would just yeah. blindly do it like oh well they have tested it so it must be working. But that yeah, is never probably well. no. So uh, uh, it's and all, also the all release my... notes, right? Sorry, go ahead. No, it's your, all uh, all your, all your points are very uh, valid and uh, important and nice. I mean, you know, like also um, the release notes, right? Like we we mm. I know we do, you know, like auto generation and all those things. That's fine. But mm. I think sometimes you may need a bit more. Like we can we can like if we if we go from say Jenkins X three dot five to three dot six, for example, right? I would like to have an upgrade uh, uh, policy, right? Like I would like to talk about what are the things that are changing, like. If you look at the release notes today and say a plugin like JX Pipeline was upgraded from, I don't know, 1.9.0 1 to 1.10.0, what does that actually mean to the you know like end user? Like, what does he know about? Like, how is it going to impact his, his Jenkins X uh, release? Like, he doesn't mm -hmm. care if it goes from 1.9, it's just a number. Maybe we did some some like performance, you know, like improvements. Maybe we fix some bugs, and so I think those things need to be reflected, and they don't have to go to hundred, you know, like repositories to you know like figure out what is happening. Uh, can can we can we write the release note ourselves, like like custom notes, or they are only auto generated? Ah, uh, at this point, they're auto auto, you know, like generated, right? Uh, we cannot but... edit them. You can edit them, of course, but now if you release like 10 versions of Jenkins X a day, <laughs> it becomes a full-time job to just go and release things. I mean, to, 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 to like go and uh, update notes. So what I'm, you know, like suggesting is a predictable release cycle. 
not just like this month I have more time, we will get 20 releases. Next month, uh, Martin has more time, we'll get 30 releases. And then, you know, Christopher has time or Tom has time, we get like a certain number of releases, 50 maybe. And then nobody has time and we don't have any releases. It's just like, when is the next release of Jenkins X coming? Like you can so still use the master can... branch and that's fine. And you know, you want to stay at the latest, fine. You know, up to you. But we want to give the end users a strong guarantee that if you are on a LTS version and you upgrade from one LTS to the other, you know, like LTS, it won't break. And if something breaks, we will have it in the upgrade guides. So just run those commands and everything should work in, in like principle, of course. We only get, you know, like better with time. So, uh, like, how can we like create a release? Like, I mean, how can we say that not every PR makes a release? Well, it's just in the pipeline, right? You can you can just like change the pipeline so that it doesn't uh, create a tag. <laughs> um, that's that's like one way. Of course, like I said, I'm still looking at it, right? So when mm -hmm. I write the proposal, like if you check the release pipeline, right, it actually creates the tag in the release pipeline. So you just remove that step. That's one way to do it. But uh, we would still want to do end-to-end -end tests, like the existing tests on every uh, like commit to master. I think that is not going to go away because you still want to do those tests, but maybe for the 1.8. So say I have an EKS cluster, uh, Tom has, you know, like an Azure cluster, like a test cluster. We have our own infrastructure in GCP, so we can use that a bit to to like test. Um, and then, of course, you know, we do this, like we do the alpha, the beta, the release candidates, and all those things, so people can try it out and give us more feedback. I, I, like all I'm saying is that. Every other open source project does this. And I think there is a bit of a guarantee of, you know, like stability there. And we should also try to do that. Yeah. Um, well, while probably while worth, trying um, to... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, it's probably worth having a hunt around in the uh, archived issues and white papers because this was something that was discussed in quite a lot of depth previously. So okay. there, there may well be... You know, some some lost knowledge that uh, you can recover from some of that documentation as well. Is it is it like the issues in Jenkins X or what? Uh, I'm I'm not sure if it was in the main issues or if there was a separate um, repository with a bunch of white papers uh, stored uh, as as issues. Uh, if you can remember where that yeah, is, I, it I, might be in I, there. I, I think it's the enhancement proposal repository. That's that's the one, yeah. Okay, I, I will check that. Okay. If there if if you can find something there, then that would be nice. Because like uh, changing all of that is, is not like a week. It's like <laughs> like it's not going to be a week's worth of work. It's going to take much longer and probably want to like involve more and more people into it so that we can do it a bit faster. Yes, I will. I will check the en enhancement proposal. Well, I'm also looking at other projects, like what are their stuff, and trying to trying to bring that into the Jenkins X thing, and maybe it will help help like wider adoption of Jenkins X. Like just talking to people here, I think that's also one of the things that they would like to have if they want to adopt Jenkins X in the future. Yeah, but that was I think what I wanted to talk about today. If somebody else has something, I should probably ask people to talk first and then I go. I know Dave is here, I guess, or? Yeah, I'm here. Yes, I thought you wanted to ask something. You. Oh Just... no! I, last uh, last office hours, I I don't remember who it was, but they were talking about how they're doing work on the uh, interface for the dashboard. Yes, the UI. Yes. Yes, the UI. So that has been one of my biggest pain points right now with JX is my pipeline needs like multiple things happening at the same time, mm -hmm. and 
the different stages, and that's, yeah. that's the word I've noticed in the UI, uh, does not really reflect what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. And one moment it'll say failed, another moment it'll say success, and then okay. it's all over the place, right? So, I mean, yeah. I don't have any questions only because uh, I, I know it's being worked on. I'm yes. excited to be a beta tester for that, if possible, just because the pain points I'm having right now with this UI is mm -hmm. really hurting the uh, the transition for us. Yes, yes. OK, uh, we, so Rajat is, uh, is, is, is the person for that. Um, it's, so we are still working on it. This potential issue, though, is not like the security vulnerability you see is not related to our code. I just yeah. want to like mention it. it. It's it's from you know like storybook, and it doesn't get published to production. So it like when you create the bundle, like you know the production build, it doesn't get uh, shipped into it. And also, uh, storybook in its next release will fix that. So it just just so that you know, not not like we are not. Like we do care about security. Just, <laughs> just saying. Of <laughs> yeah. course you do. I have fixed a bunch of dependable bot alerts in the last week, by the way. So we can run this on your machine and you can get the new, uh, you have a look at it and it shows logs, right? Log yes, but I would, yeah. I would like, to have this shown in some office hours. I know we talked about mm. it last week, but sorry, last office hours. Mm. Uh, we still need to have some like additional work mm. before we can present. But I don't, I don't want to like, like wait for, for like a lot of features because this is a like this is going to be you know like an ongoing project and i think it already has uh you know like parity with the old ui mm. uh so if roger if you can can you add it to the you know like action items like i would like to see a demo of the ui next time i know i talked about it last last meeting but let's let's just get like let us show it to the community uh let them start the testing after the demo next week because there are a lot of things that we don't know and one of the things that we are trying to do with the ui is make it more you know like testable i have a branch that is adding tests uh with like it's not a lot of code but also using things like playwright to do end-to-end -end tests. So if you find a bug, the first thing that I expect the UI SIG team to do is to write a test, uh, you know, like reproduce it and then add the feature. Uh, it's just standard software uh, practice. So, uh, but yes, we would, we would love to have the demo and then, you know, people can just try it out and see if we can improve it a bit like, the user. So the whole point of the new JX UI is to improve the UX and DX uh, experience of like, the people. But yes, uh, Rajas is the person for that. Rajat Gupta, he's our GSOC uh, contributor. He's working on the UI. So yeah, I'm just I'm I'm excited to try it. Like uh, yes. I, I mean, in any way I can help, let me know. I'm not really a developer, but I can definitely help with any of the pipeline stuff or, you know, whatever yes. it is, testing, QAing, whatever you need me for. Yes, that that is that is going to be awesome. Thanks yeah. for the help, actually. Like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very excited for it because the current UI, like I said, it's uh, it works if the yeah. project is simple. But as soon as you start to complicate things and I don't know so about you guys, what but all the pipelines of... are complicated for me. So what kind of complications are you talking about when you say a complicated pipeline? So uh, has anyone here ever used Knapsack Pro as an example? Knapsack Pro? Knapsack Pro, yeah. So basically it's an application that lets you do RSpec. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of tests. It's with a K. Uh, Knapsack this. with a K, yeah. So it lets you do dynamic testing with like in parallelism. So basically for your unit testing for Ruby, for instance, as an example for our spec and mini tests, mm -hmm. we have a lot of tests and we have so many that if we ran them in like just at once, mm -hmm. uh, they could take up to an hour and something to run. That mm -hmm. really slows on our CI. So what we do, 
at, well, the example there is run one hour test suites in two minutes, because as long as you have up to 10 nodes, huh. it will split the test to those different nodes and run the slowest one in runs on each node. And then the fast ones, it'll just split up real quickly between all of them, trying to make each one run at the same amount of time. Yeah. Very so, interesting. Yeah, so we use that here with, uh, we currently use BuildKite for our old monolith. I'm trying to move us to uh, into uh, Jenkins X. And one of the biggest issues I had was when I go to the dashboard and I look at all the different stages, Sometimes it says good, sometimes it says bad, things are all over the place. I can't see the logs properly. Some of the logs mm. don't show at all. Some mm. logs show only way, way, way later. Mm. It, it just, it really feels like the experience is truly not polished in any way. It yes. works if it's just one stage, one pipeline, real something simple, real small. I haven't had any issues. You start adding more of those things, moving parts, it just goes all over the place. So. And I'm going to just call bullshit here because they say they support Jenkins. Trav, uh, if you go to the bottom, it even says Jenkins X, funny enough. What? Right. So they know yeah. about Jenkins X. Okay, great. But but it's bullshit. And the reason why I say that is because I've reached out to the, the actual CEO of this company to help me implement it initially because I'm like, oh, you guys said you support it. How do you guys do it? He had no idea. Oh, so okay. Maybe we can actually reach out yeah. to them it, well i got it working to some degree but as i said the ui is the problem now where the developers can't see the logs properly because they're all over the place the staging doesn't actually say the proper status and stuff so i'm interested yeah. to try the new ui just to see where where things fall and how we can improve things because yes i don't want to focus on the old stuff if we're definitely going into the new better stuff right so. yes 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 i mean like that UI is not like you know it hasn't had a feature added in like what a year and a half or something exactly uh, so like all of the, like all of the activities actually in, in JX UI is just that you know <laughs> we are still like okay yes yeah. so fine so okay so next week not next week next after next meeting we'll give a demo and then we will get in touch with you Please. so that you can test it out uh, at least the first time i just want to have some like what do you think <laughs> uh, oh, of course, and of course. then yeah but that's that's it. i actually didn't know about this great this yes, is good. And, and it's funny the the weeks that we have the office hours here mm -hmm. i also have an internal kubernetes meeting in my company where uh -huh. i usually show them the new stuff with jenkins x as much as i can or new pipelines changes that i've made Mm -hmm. So I would have another 10 or 15 people who will see this on the Thursday of the same week. And then the following one, I'll have some feedback from within my company as well. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, also, if, 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 if like, you know, like people in your company want to join the next uh, meeting, we will have the demo. Whatever yeah, it's just, this is show. a bad time for, for oh. the rest of my company. That's why I'm the only one who joins because I'm very, I want to be involved they're busy with other stuff so oh, okay <laughs> but but they'll definitely be interested to see what's going on because they will yes. be using it right yes so, yes so. that's going to be great actually that's yeah. that's that's very nice yeah and another point i think is that we should try to add an issue to to support knapsack pro properly perhaps there's some way we can use pipelines and take them to make it run run better i mean Maybe to support Jenkins X V2. <laughs> it's been a long time. But yeah, we should yeah. we should for sure, you know, like reach out to them so that mm. we can also improve. I mean, I'm like always willing to have Jenkins X being shown in like websites like this because it mm. first of all gives, you know, like visibility that we're actually a CI C D uh, platform. Like I, I tried to do it with uh, with you know like overalls. But uh, I, I don't know what happened to that. I also left my, my last job. So, um, you know, just just like, you know, giving it more, uh, like having just more, more people talk about it just helps. Well, yeah. I'll tell you this right now. All the stuff happens technically in the tech on part. At yes. least that's hmm. how I got it working. So if we, hmm. like, I, I could 
demo what I have in place. I mean, not right now because we're we're over the meeting, but yeah. I could always uh, demo what I have in place. And you know, I'm not a Tecton expert. I'm learning it at this moment. If any of mm -hmm. you have any suggestions on how I can prove what I've done, I mm -hmm. can then reach out to the CEO of this company and be like, "Listen, here's my write up of how we did it, my documentation." can we interpret it for your company? And then we put yeah. it in the Jenkins X and maybe in the Tekton section of the Navsack Pro? Yeah. If you want to write that in a Google Doc and just share it in the channel, then yes, I can take a look. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for all the suggestions. I think we all have to say goodbye. Yes, right. we should. We should leave. <laughs> yeah. so not not leave, but like also my battery is like eleven percent. Great, like six percent. Okay, yeah. that's it. I I have to leave. Time. It was nice knowing all of you. Bye. Yes. Uh, bye bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye bye.